BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. This week at the par the parasha, we have a lot of fun information. This is Vayikra nine. It begins at Vayikra nine. So, just a quick review. We did Vayikra eight last week. We read that. He gave all of the instructions on how to consecrate the priesthood, the Kohen, and then when you start in Vayikra 9, uh, you see that they repeat every last bit of that, and it says they actually did that. Vemos que la semana pasada, lo que leímos, <coughs> pues ahora se repite algo de lo mismo, y vemos que todo esto Vuelve y se repite. Except it adds one thing, Vayikra 9.24. Excepto de que añade algo más, y esto es Levíticos 1.24. It says that fire came forth from the presence of Jehovah, consuming the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Esto es Levíticos 1.24. Now, 9.24 Now we don't know how long No sabemos qué tanto tiempo It was from 9.24 Qué tanto tiempo pasó desde el 9.24 To 10.1 Hasta el versículo 10 eh, Hasta el capítulo 10, versículo 1 But I'm not thinking it was too long Pero Raúl no está pensando de que pasó mucho tiempo I think as a matter of fact, it was a very short period of time, maybe just days. Bueno, pues más bien lo que creo es de que fue un, un tiempo muy corto y estoy hablando algo de unos cuantos días. So they were consecrated and they did all that and the Lord accepted the altar. Ellos consagraron todas las cosas y hicieron todo lo que iba a hacer y el Señor aceptó el altar. And he accepted the offering. Y aceptó la ofrenda. And everything was hunky-dory. Y todo estaba hermoso. And then, y luego, Nadab and Avihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before Jehovah, something he had not ordered them to do. At this, fire came forth from the presence of Jehovah and consumed them so that they died in the presence of Jehovah. Moshe said to Aaron, This is what Jehovah said Those who are near me, I will, will be con I, I will be consecrated, and before all, <clears throat> all the people, I will be glorified. So he killed the two Cohen. Aquí vemos de que el señor pues eh, puso fuera de circulación a estos dos sacerdotes. 
just right after he accepted the offering and everybody praised him and everything was great. De una vez luego de que él aceptó todas estas ofrendas y todo estaba bonito y todo estaban contento y se los llevó pff, de la nada. So anyway, they called they called some others. Eh, llamaron a otros. It says their names, Mishael and Etzefan. Y aquí vemos los nombres de Mishael y Etzefan, que estos fueron los dos otros Cohen que llamaron. The sons of Uziel, Aaron's y, uncle, and told them carry their cousins out from in front of the sanctuary. Y ellos es, fue el trabajo de ellos era sacar de, del santuario a estos eh, primos de ellos que ya en este momento ya estaban muertos. So anyway. Uh, Moshe is ordered not to mourn over this. Y Moisés dijo que por favor no no eh, hagan luto. And so there has been endless discussion about what they offered. Y hay han habido un sinfín de argumentos en qué fue lo que ellos ofreci, ofrendaron que el Señor los mató. So Jehovah institutes an order here. He says to Aaron, don't drink any wine or intoxicating liquor, neither you nor your sons with you. Eight. Versículo ocho. So when you enter the tent of meeting, so you won't die. This is a permanent regulation throughout all your generations. So that you will distinguish between holy and common and between the unclean and the clean So that you will teach the people of Israel the laws Jehovah has told them through Moshe. Y aquí vemos que el Señor le dijo a Moshe de que no no que no to, no se embriagase antes de entrar al santuario. So because of this particular passage, y por causa de este de este pasaje en particular, it alludes to the fact that alcohol was somehow involved in this offering nos alude, o sea, nos da a, a más o menos entender de que en esa ofrenda había alcohol involucrado. Whether they were drinking it and they got stupid and authorized and offered something that he told them not to. <laughs> El hecho de que tal vez se hayan embriagado y después ellos pues cogieron y prendieron un incenso extraño allí y qué fue lo que pasó, pues solo ellos saben. Or whether they actually used alcohol in some sort of uh, uh, incense offering. O tal vez que hayan utilizado el alcohol como en forma de un incienso. We don't know which and we don't really truthfully know 100%. No sabemos específicamente el 100% qué fue lo que sucedió. But it does allude to the fact that alcohol was somehow involved in this. Y, pero nos deja saber de que de una manera u otra el alcohol estaba involucrado en toda esta situación. But we don't know exactly what the offering consisted of. Pero no sabemos específicamente de qué consistía la ofrenda. But apparently they offered something. It says that he offered something unauthorized that Jehovah had not told them to bring. Pero claramente podemos ver de que el Señor de que ellos ofrendaron algo que el Señor no estaba en acuerdo que ellos hicieron esa ofrenda. So there's a deeper there's a deeper meaning to this. Hay un entendimiento aún más profundo en cuanto a esto. Because he goes into it and it says this is to be a permanent regulation throughout all your generations you'll distinguish between the holy and the common. Aquí, aquí vemos de que él dice que esto lo vas a hacer para siempre y que vas a, a poder distinguir de lo, san, lo que es santo y lo que es normal. And between the unclean and the clean. Y vas a saber lo que es, lo, lo que es eh, puro y lo que es impuro. So apparently, uh, what they offered was uh, common or unclean, not even holy, not even something set apart. Y aparentemente lo que ellos ofrendaron fue algo común, fue algo impuro, algo que, que no fue separado para los propósitos eh, en, en el santuario. Now, we know that wine, we have a Shabbat wine offering. Sabemos que del vino y tenemos una ofrenda en el Shabbat. And we have a, we have a Rosh Kodesh wine offering. Y también tenemos una ofrenda de Rosh Kodesh de, de vino. Now, When 
It says don't drink any intoxic wine or intoxicating liquor when you enter this tent of meeting. So apparently they didn't drink that wine offering. Apparently they poured it out somewhere before him. Aquí podemos leer de que ellos no necesariamente se, se bebieron el, el vino. Lo que, aparece, lo que aparece es de que ellos eh, regaron este vino en algún lugar en su presencia. So we're not really sure if they burned that wine in their censer. No sabemos si ellos verdaderamente eh, pues eh, hicieron holocausto con este vino, o sea que lo quemaron y lo ofrendaron. But all we know is that it was something that he had not authorized as holy to be done. Pero todo lo que sabemos es que esto fue algo impuro, algo no santo, lo que ellos ofrendaron, algo que él no estaba de acuerdo. So given that, It doesn't really matter what it was. Entonces, eh, hablando entre tantas cosas, verdaderamente no interesa nada de eso. The reason I say that y la razón por, lo que di, por la que lo digo is because he was very specific in es, spelling out what he does want. Y es porque él fue muy específico en lo que él quería. So since the Lord specifically spelled out what he does want, entonces viendo que el Señor fue muy específico en lo que él quiere, he really shouldn't have to even talk about what he doesn't want. Él verdaderamente ni siquiera tiene que hablar de lo que él no quiere. If you're offering the things he said offer and you're putting on the altar the things he said put on the altar, si tú pones las cosas la la si tú le entregas a él las ofrendas que él pidió y tú pones en el altar las cosas que él pidió, pues todo está bien. Y verdaderamente no deberíamos de hacernos una lista e in enorme en cuanto a, co a cosas que podemos poner en el altar o no. And if you read the whole Torah, there's only there's only about a half a dozen things that he really wants on that altar. Pero si lees la Torah en su totalidad, pues vas a ver como que hay solo como aproximadamente media docena de las cosas que se pueden poner allí. So now, anybody got questions or comments about this? Alguien tiene alguna pregunta o comentario? Javier. 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 Javier, if, uh, if it's possible so that you can translate right away. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I, I can translate it. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, shalom, uh, Raoul. Um, mm -hmm. it, so regards what uh, the, the um, offering that was a strange offering uh, for the uh, Aaron's children had done it. Um, It's the same thing, uh, Rob Will, right? Uh, it applies uh, uh, for the misbox of uh, our God because God says, our God says, keep the Shabbat holy. So when when men, when, 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 when humans say, no, it's not the Shabbat, it's the Sunday or it's Monday or it's Tuesday or Wednesday, it's, it's, it's practically the same, am I right? Translate that, if you will, Javier. Yeah, lo que le estoy preguntando al maestro Will es que donde vemos donde lo que hicieron los hijos de Aarón en cuanto a la ofrenda extraña que ofrecieron es como un paralelo cuando el Señor, cuando nuestro padre habla, ¿no? Nuestro padre dice, mantén el sábado y pues el hombre, eh, eh, el hombre dice no, es el domingo, no, es el lunes, no, es el martes, el miércoles. Entonces es prácticamente lo mismo, ¿no? All right, Javier is correct about this. The, the Sunday worship. Javier está en lo correcto en cuanto a esto de la adoración en el domingo. Is calling something holy that. Uh, Elohim did not authorize. Es la, por ejemplo, la adoración el domingo. Esto es llamar a algo santo que Elohim mismo no llama a esto santo. Uh, he only authorized the worship uh, holy days on uh, the first of the, the first day of the week twice. Eh, solo él otorga días santos en el primer día de la semana dos veces. 
Those are always on Sunday. That's Bikurim and Shavuot. Y estos son Bikurim y Shavuot que caen en un domingo. So he says in this passage, this is a permanent regulation through all your generations, uh, so that you will distinguish between the holy and the common. Aquí vemos que él dice que esto es una regulación por, para, para siempre y vas a poder distinguir lo que es santo y lo que no es santo. Now, how many of you guys were ever at a different messianic congregation? ¿Cuántos de ustedes estuvieron en una congregación mesiánica que no fue esta? Or a different, uh, even Jewish congregation. O alg alguna vez estuvieron en una congregación judía que no fuera esta. I don't see any hands online. Anybody in here? Rabbi Andrew was at a Jewish congregation. Algunos en línea no vemos a nadie. There are a few others in here that were messianics. All right, the Jews added something. Believe it or not, the Jews even added something to this passage. Crea, créanlo o no, los judíos añadieron algo a este pasaje. Uh, when I was at a Talmudic Jewish congregation, cuando Rabwell estaba en una congregación que se basaba en el Talmud, they used this very passage to justify the Havdalah service. Ellos utilizaron este mismo pasaje para justificar el servicio del Havdalah. Now you don't, you guys don't know that service. It's a very fancy braided candle. Eh, esto es un, un, un festival que ellos hacen, una fiesta que ellos hacen es con esta vela que es muy elegante y, la, y es eh, entretejida. And they set that thing up and they burn it and they do these prayers and they do this ritual and then they take that candle y and they put it out in a cup of wine. Y ellos lo que hacen es que la prenden, hacen sus oraciones, hacen sus rituales y cuando ya termina todo, pues ellos agarran la vela y la apagan en una botella de vino. And I always thought that it was ridiculous. Y yo siempre pensé que esto era ridículo. That these guys would do that. Que estos hombres harían esto. Because when you put that candle out, porque cuando tú apagas esa vela, in the wine, en el vino, you're burning alcohol. Lo que estás haciendo es quemando el alcohol. So that is potentially one of the things that these guys may have been killed for. Y esto es potencialmente una de las razones por la cual los hijos de Aarón se, <laughs> se, se, se quemaron vivos prácticamente. And yet they're trying to do that ritual to. They say that the Havdalah, it separates the, the common from the holy. Everything after the Havdalah service is uh, holy. And then a lot of them after the Shabbat would do another one to, to do another separation of holy and common. Pues ellos lo que hacen con, este, con, este, con esta tradición, con este ritual, es ellos dicen pues que lo que sucede es que esto va a hacer la diferencia entre lo que es santo y lo que no es santo. Después de, la, de esta fiesta, todos supuesta, todo supuestamente tiene que ser santo. Incluso, aún hasta después del Shabbat, ellos van y hacen este mismo ritual. Y créanlo o no, siempre habría un idiota de esos que se quería beber ese vino. <risa> So, has anybody got anything else about separating the holy from the common? ¿Será que alguien tiene algo más en cuanto a esto de separar lo común de lo santo? Seeing none, we'll move on to a long, long, long I paragraph. I think uh, oh, Rosa. Wait, I see Rosa. Go ahead, Rosa. Rosa, Rosa. Yes, don't go on. I want. I have a question because um, talking about separating the unholy with the holy. Now, I've been studying a lot about, you know, herbs and, you know, different kinds and, you know, what, how to make, you know, use them as medication and teas and, and, and extracts and, and even tinctures, right? Right. So, and, then, and tinct a tincture, it, it takes alcohol. But, um, you know, when you make a tincture, it takes sugar and you let it ferment, right? So that alcohol level goes down 
and that becomes a medicine. But I have withheld myself of making it because I wanted to ask if it could be done. It would be done into a medicine, you know, and that alcohol actually goes, it, it goes um, down because of the sugar. After it, it ferments, you know, it takes a time of fermentation. So, it would that be, um, would it be wrong? Would it be unholy? No, no, the tinctures. Or is it okay? The tinctures are fine, uh, and those are good medicine. Just don't, don't make okay. a tincture out of marijuana. Or hash, or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, no. Make make tinctures out of out of medicinal plants that are good for you. Yeah, medicinal. It's actually actually a uh, medicinal. And that's why I wanted to add because you know I don't, I don't want to go and like profane myself or something like that. I wanted to add. Before. Yeah. Now, now don't bring me don't bring me any of it to burn on the altar because I can't. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So, but I have another question. Talking about that, usually, okay, that he, the, here they say that Jehovah said that I'm um, going to He said that um, you know you can't drink any wine or intoxicating liquor or anything like that when you're doing an offering, right? Right. So I wanted to know exactly when you every time you I, I see a Rosh Kodesh and you know and and um and, ho and holy days that. I see you do make offerings, burn offerings, and then I see that you have a, a cup of wine there um, on the side with the meat and all and, and all that. What exactly do you do with that wine? I pour that wine out before the Lord on the altar. I don't burn it. I pour it down the side where there's no fire. Okay, on the side. Okay, that's what I want to do. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, now there is a since he talked about separating what is clean and unclean, viendo que ya habló de, de separar lo que es puro e impuro. We're going to go by the way, Aaron himself made quite a few more mistakes here. Y, va, y, y vamos a ver que Aarón también cometió varios errores el mismo. The blood of the goat of the sin offering was not brought into the sanctuary. La sangre del chivo expiatorio, pues esta no fue traída dentro del santuario. So these guys got a lot of stuff wrong. It's very difficult to do these offering procedures correctly. Es, estos hombres hicieron muchas cosas erróneas porque es muy difícil hacer estos procedimientos perfectos. So you see, he went, he went, uh, he he went to great lengths to consecrate a priesthood. But you see, the first week, man, it went horribly wrong. Vemos que él eh, pasó un largo tiempo para consagrar a todos esos estos eh, sacerdotes, pero la primera semana de ellos ejercer su posición, pues hubo un desastre. So anyway. Beyond that, uh, they corrected the mistake and Moshe was satisfied. Be más allá de eso, pues ellos eh, arreglaron sus errores y Moisés eh, aceptó todo. So, Vaikra 11. Levíticos 11. These are the living creatures which you may eat. Estas son los animales vivientes que podrás comer de ellos. So this is a lot. A separate hoof which is completely divided and choose the cud. Aquí vemos que es la pezuña eh, que tenga pezuña separada y que rume. Okay, is everybody familiar with what a cud is? What what kind of animals do that? ¿Saben ustedes lo que es rumiar y qué, y qué tipo de animales rumean? Pues él nos lo va a explicar una vez más. These grass -eating animals Estos animales que comen hierba. Have a cud. Ellos tienen un corte. And what that cud is, y lo que hace este corte. It's the ball of grass, 
es una bola de, de eh, hierba that collects in, in a grass eating animal's stomach that's up here que esta se, se recolecta de el estómago de este animal y esta se recolecta en la garganta de ellos and they have another stomach for the pulverized portions but the, but the animal doesn't pulverize it immediately y hay otra sección de su estómago que es para la comida que ya está pulverizada pero ellos no hacen este proceso inmediatamente. If you have sheep or goats or cattle or whatever, si tienes vaca, eh, vacas, chivos o, o ovejas, or even deer, any kind of grazing animal, o tal vez este, algún venado o cualquier animal que rume, what they'll do, lo que ellos harán es, is they will load up that, that first stomach All day long, they will go and they'll graze and they'll pull it up and graze and graze and they'll pack it in here. Y ellos lo que van a hacer es que van a, a, a comerse toda esa hierba y comen todo lo que pueden todo el día y la van a sostener en, eh, pues en la garganta allí, en ese, en, esa, en, en ese estómago que está allí, en el esófago, digamos. And then they'll go off somewhere and get comfortable where they feel safe and comfortable and they'll lay down. Y ellos se van a un lugar donde se sientan cómodos, donde se sientan a salvo y se van a, a recostar. And they'll bring that undigested material up into the back of their mouth on their molars, on their grinding teeth. Y lo que van a hacer es que este material que no fue destruido en la primera vez, pues lo van a volver a traer de a sus molares. And they look hilarious doing it, but it's a reflex action, just y, like... If your back itches, you just kind of reflex scratch it. Y, y por ejemplo, eh, eh, se ve muy cómico cuando yo lo hacen, pero esto es, se ve en forma como que están teniendo eh, eh, un momento de una pequeña erupción y usualmente o pues tú te, te, te pasas la mano por la espalda, pero en ese caso para el ser humano. But what they'll do is they'll bring it up and you can hear it grinding, grinding, grinding and it's almost like a circular motion. Their whole head will get in the rhythm y te it. vas a dar cuenta cuando ellos, cuando están, están en su posición de descanso allí, que están eh, masticando una vez más toda esta hierba que no fue triturada en la primera vez, y es, ellos hacen este movimiento como que en la forma circular, eh, circular, y te vas a dar cuenta que están comiéndosela. So that's why, that's what the cud is. The cud is the undigested uh, material they've stored up for later processing Uh, through their digestive system. Y lo que vemos es, es el proceso de, todo esta, de toda esta hierba que no fue procesada, la traen a un proceso final en ese momento. Now you don't have that ability. Bueno, ninguno de los seres humanos tienen esa habilidad. So there are certain types of straw and grass, if you eat it. Hay ciertos, eh, hay, hay cierta paja o hierba que si la comes, It will come out of you and it'll look exactly the same as it did when it went in. Y esta, y si te la comes, esta va a, a um, va a salir igual como te la comiste. Te, no va a haber ninguna diferencia. Because you can't digest it. Porque no puedes digerirla. No, the, the cut itself is the, the undigested material. It's like that reserve of, of grass, that food. So anyway, once they pulverize it down, they'll pulverize it to where it's nearly liquid. Y una vez que ellos lo pulverizan, los pulverizan hasta el punto que ya esa, esa paja ya es prácticamente casi líquido. And then their next stomach Can digest it for nutrients. Y entonces luego ese estómago que tienen en el cuello aquí o en la garganta, pues esto va a hacer, lo van a digerir como alimento para sí. But again, you don't have that, so unless you want the worst case of diarrhea you ever had, don't eat grass. Pues eh, <laughs> tú no tienes dos estómagos y si, al menos que quiera una diarrea que, que no pare, pues no comas hierba de ninguna manera. Now you can eat a lot of stuff that cattle eat. Puedes comer muchas cosas que las vacas comen o los ganados comen. But not the straw off of any grain producing field, field uh, straw. Pero ninguna paja que sea de un o de, de, 
de un granero o algo, una mata que esté dando, eh, y, eh, esté produciendo granos. Now you can eat all the grain heads you want to off of grass. Y si quieres, si quieres puedes comerte todas la, las cabecillas de, de, de las, de las, de la, del grain, o sea, de los cereales, o, eh, pero es hasta allí solo es lo que puedes comer. Yeah, you can, you can eat the seed. Oh, like the fescue seeds and everything. It's nasty as everything. Puedes comerte las semillas, pero esto es desagradable. And most humans are highly allergic to fescue seed. Y la mayoría de los seres humanos son alérgicos a estas semillas que todavía no han sido, no son, no están listas para la cosecha. But you can't eat the straw like a cow can. Pero no puedes comerte la, la paja de, de, estas, de estas matas. And I'm not sure about the roots. I ain't ever tried that. Y no estoy seguro de las raíces. <laughs> Nunca las he probado. So anybody got questions about the chewing the cud? Preguntas en cuanto al rumiar. All right, everybody seems to have that. Now these animals you can eat. You are not to eat those that only chew the cud. Or only have a separate hoof. For example, the camel, the coney, and the hare are unclean for you. Because even though they chew the cud, they don't have a separate hoof. El camello, el caballo, estos animales pues se rumean, pero tú no, no tienes las, este, la pezuña no está dividida. All right, that animal is unclean for you. Those animals are unclean for you. Esos animales son impuros de comer. If you've ever killed a horse, a camel, a rabbit, any of that? Si matas alguna vez un conejo, un, un caballo o un camello? Uh, they don't have a separated hoof. They have a solid hoof. Ellos no tienen una pezuña separada, sino es una sólida. A donkey, for instance, has a solid hoof. Por ejemplo, un burro, eh, pues eh, este tiene una pezuña sólida. Go ahead, Stephanie. You know, I have a rabbit, and I have never noticed it chewing the cud. The only time I ever see it chewing was when it's putting food in its mouth and eating. Does yours ever chew the cud? Uh, I um, Sometimes I see him doing this yeah, that's on it. his own. That's and it. And I don't know why, and we think. Maybe I just, I'm going to pay it. What do you feed him? Huh? <laughs> what I do feed you? Him, um, Timothy hates that. He chews the cud. He'll do it. Well, we feed, uh, I always wait. Yeah, I always be seeing because he eats just the hay. Well, see, if he eats pellets, he won't chew his cud because that's already processed for him. But if you give him actual Timothy hay, he'll ch lay them ears down and them eyes will get little and he'll chew that cud. Yeah. I'll actually, I will take a little video of him doing that. Mm -hmm. And you will see he goes in his corner and he just, you think he's sleeping, he's not sleeping. And he, yep, like, he's oh, chewing his cud. <laughs> Even when he's sleeping, laying down, you see him. Okay, well, people ask why, since it chews the cud, why not? And I get this question a lot. Why not? Why yeah. the separated hoof? Hey, hay muchas, hay muchas, muchas personas hacen esta pregunta. Okay, rumean. Pero ¿por qué no se pueden comer? Eh, por las pezuñas, ¿qué tiene que ver las pezuñas? Y ahora el rabino va a explicar por qué. Okay, all of these animals with a solid hoof. Todos estos animales con una pezuña sólida. And all of these hairs have a similar issue. Y todos estos tienen un mismo problema en particular. Uh, an animal that runs fast like that and un, stands primarily. Un animal que corre rápido como estos, tanto como el camello, el caballo, el conejo, y estos por lo normal se están, están parados en un mismo lugar por mucho tiempo. See, now you guys both have rabbits in cages, right? You guys have rabbits that can't no. move around much, right? No, not mine. He's free roaming in the house. Okay, well you won't have that problem. But a rabbit that's in a cage that does not move much, and a horse that stands in a stall... For a long time and never gets to go out and run, will actually go lame. Oh. Eh, pues un animal, pues el caballo que esté parado en un establo todo el tiempo, eh, o un conejo que, o sea, no tenga nada más que hacer sino que pararse, pues este animal se va a, a simplemente a, 
I'm lame. Cripple. Sí, se va a quedar inválido, paralítico prácticamente. Okay, the reason for that is, is those animals, in addition to their heart, el, en adicional de estos animales es de que a pesar de, de su corazón they have a hollow cavity and a pump in those hooves and in the in the bottoms of their feet pads ellos tienen como este tipo como una goma en medio de esa pezuña es como una bomba que bombea and when they step It pumps the blood out of their leg. Y lo que hace es que cada vez que ellos presionan encima de esas, de esas pezuñas o van corriendo, esta lo que hace es que bombea la, el, la sangre de regreso por su sistema. Ellos no tienen válvulas coronarias así como la tenemos nosotros en nuestras piernas. So, There is no way you can slaughter that animal. Entonces no hay manera en la que tú puedas eh, matar ese animal. And have it die without its blood in it. It'll die with most of its blood in it. Y, y que este muera sin su sangre. ¿Por qué? Porque este, esos animales van a morir con toda la sangre. And you have to bleed the animal uh, or it's not clean. Tú tienes que, vas a tener que drenarle la sangre a ese animal o si no este animal no va a ser puro. So that's why some of these that even though they chew the cud and they would otherwise be clean are not. Eh, y hay muchos de estos animales que rumean, pues eh, tú creerás que ellos son este puro, pero la verdad es que no lo son. Now, everybody clear on that? Estamos claro. All right. Don't. Now, the pig is unclean for you because although it has a separate and completely divided hoof, it does not chew the cud. You are not to eat the meat from these or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Y aquí ya vemos la situación del cerdo. El cerdo tiene una pezuña separada, pero no rumea. Y no podemos ni siquiera tocar el, el animal ya después de muerto, porque este animal es considerado impuro para nosotros. All right, so the pig's digestive system is exactly like ours. El sistema digestivo de un puerco es exactamente como el de nosotros. The dog's is like ours. El de un perro es el como de nosotros. Uh, these other unclean animals, so they eat scraps, carrion, dead things. Estos animales comen todo. Meat from other animals. So they are uh, anything that does that is generally going to be unclean. Cualquier animal que haga esto por lo general es un animal impuro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, if we If we, uh, we're not clean for eating. Nosotros los seres humanos no somos puro para comer. But hey, listen. There are there are a few things that are clean for eating that come from an unclean animal. Hay ciertas cosas que se pueden comer de un animal que es impuro. Can anybody tell me what those are? ¿Quiénes me pueden decir que cuáles Let's son esos? Around. Where's Rabbi Andrew's chess piece? You have it in the hand. <laughs> Checkmate. All right, Stephanie. Okay. Las abejas. Yes, Stephanie's right. Honey comes from an ¿Dónde unclean saca la miel? De un animal. animal impuro. You cannot eat the honeybee. No te puedes comer la abeja. And that's a good thing because I wasn't going to try that anyway. Es muy bueno porque yo ni siquiera lo iba a intentar. All right. What what else can you glean from an animal that's unclean ¿Qué, for eating? ¿Qué más puedes comer de un animal que es impuro? Anybody? Anybody at all? All right. Anybody in here breastfed? ¿Será que alguien ha, ha sido amamantado? Milk. Your mother's milk is clean for you. La la leche de tu mamá es Pura para ti. But your mother's flesh is not. Pero la carne de tu mamá no es buena para que te la comas. No, that, that doesn't count, Rabbi. 
<risa> Aquí en la casa dicen que eso no cuenta porque él está hablando de animales. <risa> Y los seres humanos no son animales. Well, hey, some of our moms acted like an animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the things that live in the water, you might eat these. Todas Any, las cosas que ves en el, el mar puedes comerte de estas. Anything that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or the river, these you may eat. Todo lo que tenga escama y aletas, sea en el mar o en el río, te lo puedes comer. Okay, that's, this is a huge problem worldwide. Esto obviamente es un problema mundial. Don't eat seafood from a Chinese or Japanese restaurant. That no se coman anybody. la comida, lo que llaman mariscos, de un lugar chino. Okay, so scales and fins. Escamas y aletas. Now the Muslims will argue Los musulmanes argumentarán that the shrimp has scales and fins. Porque el the shrimp la bueno pues los camarones tienen escamas y aletas. Some Jews even argue. Hasta los judíos, algunos judíos argumentan de que los camarones tienen aletas. I know y escamas. a few very famous Jewish singers. El Rapwell conoce unos cuantos judíos que cantan y son muy famosos. That argue that the shrimp has scales and fins. Y estos argumentan de que los camarones tienen escamas y aletas. Well, the shrimp has a little tail fin. Bueno, sí, la, el camarón tiene una colita que parece de escamas. But he also has an exoskeleton. Pero este también tiene un esqueleto que... Um, an outside skeleton. Tiene un esqueleto que no es por dentro, sino por fuera. A jointed outside skeleton does not count as scales. Un esqueleto que es unido como en capas no, no cuenta como escamas. So the shrimp is unclean for you. Entonces el camarón es impuro para que te lo comas. The crab is unclean for you. El, eh, el cangrejo, cero cangrejo. The shark and the catfish and the alligator are unclean for you. El, cam el tiburón, eh, um, el crocodile, el cocodrilo, no te lo puedes comer. El caimán. Caimán, largarto, depende de dónde mm -hmm. vengan, porque en cada país lo llaman por su nombre. All right, so. En, y en Brasil, jacaré. So anyway, the following creatures of the air are to be detestable for you. They're not to be eaten. They're a detestable thing. The eagle, the vulture, the osprey, the kite, and various kinds of buzzards, various kinds of ravens, the ostrich, the screech owl, the seagull, and various kinds of hawks, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, The horned owl, the pelican, the barn owl, the stork, and various kinds of herons, the hoopo, and the bat. Esto, so, todos esos nombres que pudieron leer allí en Levíticos. All right. Well, they're disgusting. They don't... Uh, yeah. Well, but the ostrich... The ostrich is a dark red bird meat, and they're really, even though they're flightless, they're really kind of a buzzard. La que es, de, 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 del animal que está, del ave que estamos hablando ahora es la avestruz, que no es clean, no es buena para comerla. El hecho de que ella tal vez no huele, o sea, no tiene mucho movimiento para volar, pero... Es como una ave de rapiña, es una ave que come otros animales si es posible. 
And see, what's interesting is the Lord put this in here because the people had been taught to eat these things. Las, la una de las razones por qué el Señor puso estas cosas aquí es porque las personas eh, eh, ya comían estas cosas. They had been taught to eat these things specifically by, by godless people. A lot of it was involving their religious rituals. Muchas de estas personas se fueron enseñadas a comer estas cosas por sus líderes religiosos y muchas de estas también fue parte de sus eh, um, servicios o, o, o religiosidad, cosas que ellos hacían. But uh, we, we eat these things primarily because we only see them at the grocery store. Nosotros comemos estas cosas primariamente porque la vemos en los supermercados. But there are a few exceptions to that. Pero hay solo unas cuantas excepciones a todo esto. You know, a lot of people hunt wild turkey. Hay alguna, muchas veces eh, eh, salen a cazar este, um, pavos eh, silvestres. And that's very good meat, by the way. Eh, déjeme decirle que eso es una carne muy buena. Who does? Elba, go ahead. Shalom, David. Shalom. Eh, ¿Será que nosotros podemos con, tener confianza en comer? We can eat uh, everything in can, in the can, you know. Eh, Dígamelo en español para yo traducirlo, hermana. <laughs> que no sorry. le estoy entendiendo, sorry. Sí. Eh, podemos eh, nosotros comer eh, todas las eh, toda la carnes que vienen enlatadas. Can we eat sardines, any, any meat that is canned, that is in a can? If a clean meat is canned, you can eat it. Si la comida es pura y está en una lata, te la puedes comer. But if an unclean meat is canned, you cannot eat it. Si es una comida que es impura, por lo menos sabemos que ellos ven en la misma latica que viene la sardina, ellos tienen también pulpo. O mejillones o escargot, no te los puedes comer. Sardines are kosher. Pero las sardinas sí son kosher. Hey, you ought to see Rabbits and Rana put habanero sauce on sardines and eat those things. <laughs> What that Jafelta? Uh, oh. Cinco minutos. All right. What was Rabbi Andrew saying back there? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Aquí está la conclusión. My final word on the clean and unclean is this: uh, People here eat pig. El, mi última palabra en cuanto a eso de lo impuro, impuro, aquí las personas comen cerdo. And they eat shrimp. Comen camarones. And they eat these animals because they never see them except in the meat case at the grocery store. Ellos lo comen porque nunca lo ven en su, eh, 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 en otro lugar, sino más que en el lugar donde lo van a comprar, el supermercado. If you saw shrimp in the ocean, you would need that. Si tú vieras al camarón en su territorio que es el, el, el mar no te lo comerías now a lot of you guys don't live out where you can see vultures and buzzards and possums and things like that muchos de ustedes no viven donde hay ciertos animales silvestres como eh, las aves de rapiñas o sea aves eh, um, que comen otros animales prácticamente but you see I see those animals pero aquí en Carolina del Norte los vemos en todos lados. Y nadie se comería a un, um, cuer un cuervo eh, si lo vieras en la calle. Pero tú si lo ves, eh, eh, un buitre. Esta es la palabra, un buitre. Si ves el buitre eh, colgado allí eh, como un pavo en el supermercado, tú ni siquiera vas a saber que no es un pavo. Pero si hubiera cockroaches en el grocery store que tenían ese exoskeleton off, 
pero si hubieran estas cucarachas en el supermercado que tienen este mismo caparazón, you couldn't tell those from shrimp. Tú tampoco sabrías si es lango, <laughs> si es camarones o cucaracha. But if you go to the ocean and you look at the way the shrimp are, you see cockroaches on the bottom of the ocean. Si tú te vas al al territorio donde viven las los camarones, las langostas que es en en las profundidades del mar, te vas a dar cuenta que se va a ver simplemente como una cucaracha. You see a possum and you do are live out where there are possums and buzzards. Go ahead, Ari. was telling me about crabs. Uh, Adriana? Oh, Rob, I just want to share that I have a friend that did some investigation with uh, the shrimp and the pork because of her illness that uh, she was supposed to stop that. But anyway, she's a messianic. And once you do the research on the animal, um, Jehovah created some animals to clean the environment So the shrimp eats a lot of the waste in the ocean. And you read all of that and you're like, wow, forget it. You don't want to know. You don't want to talk to shrimp. As well as the pork. Um, when you take a piece of pork and you look under the micro microscope, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, forget it. So, yeah, it's part of it. I just wanted to make that comment. Too. Por favor, que si puede, eh, dice Rob. Uh, que si puede repetir eso en español. When I was a pagan, I liked shrimp, shrimp so much. Go ahead, Miss Adriana. Adriana. Dun, 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 dun. Bueno, lo que, que la hermana Adriana está diciendo que ella estaba tiene un amigo, una compañera que investigó todo esto de los camarones, el puerco, el cerdo y sabemos que hay ciertos animales que es, están en la tierra para limpiar la tierra y cuando te das cuenta que el camarón todo lo que come es la basura que hay en el, en el mar y hablando de basura estamos hablando es materia fecal de los otros animales que hay en el mar, eso es lo que ellos comen, 100%. When I was a pagan, I liked shrimp so much. Cuando Rabuel era pagano, le gustaba tanto el camarón. And I'm allergic to it. Y él es alérgico. All right, but I would eat it anyway. Y él como quiera se lo comía. And the way I kept myself from getting sick. Y la forma en la cual él se mantuvo de no enfermarse. Is I would have to drink really strong alcohol. Era la única forma que él tenía que beber mucho al licor. And smoke strong unfiltered cigarettes to get the nicotine in my system y, pa, y tenía que fumar cigarrillo, ciga, cigarrillos no filtrados para que toda esa nicotina pura pasara por su sistema and i would have to do that for a couple hours before and a couple hours after eating the shrimp y él tenía que hacer este proces, procedimiento antes y después de comerse los camarones so i love that so much that i would go through all that just to eat it y a él le gustaba tanto eso que él pasaba por todo ese proceso solo para comerse los camarones. All right, it is time for Rav Yehoshua's class. Ha llegado la hora. Oh, it's time for the reading of the verse. Right? This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please 
consider a donation to our ministry, you can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the Donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y. 
www.ifim.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.